Welcome to today's broadcast, you mighty earth-shaking, history-making, mountain-moving, giant-killing, demon-stomping, water-walking champion. God is with you. God is for you. I'm Pastor Glenn, and it's Terrific Tuesday. Let me just read you two or three verses. Psalm 64, verse 2 and 3. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, right, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity, who sharpen their tongues like a sword and who bend their bows to shoot arrows at me. Uh, Hebrews 4, 16, let us therefore come boldly with confidence, with assurance to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of trouble. Psalm 55, 16 and 18 through 18, as for me, I don't know about you, as for me, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me. Praise God. Uh, evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he will hear my voice. He has redeemed my soul uh, in peace from the battle which was against me. All right. I've been talking a little bit about the blessing. The blessing is a thing in the Bible. It says the term the blessing as opposed to blessing or the or blessings, okay? The blessing is a supernatural divine gift from God given to every Christian that guarantees success in every area of life. Well, that's not my experience, Pastor Glenn. Well, that's not Pastor Glenn's experience either, but I'm going for it, praise God. I haven't arrived, but at least I left. The blessing enables, really guarantees God's people to thrive and prosper and succeed and be victorious uh, and uh, in life as, as we increase with the increase of God. All of God's wonderful blessings originate from the blessing. All right, Deuteronomy 111, you know that. May the Lord, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and we're hooked up to those guys according to Galatians 3 and Romans 4. May the Lord, the God of our fathers, increase you a thousand times over and prosper you as he has promised. Okay, I've been talking about prayer, and I want you to know that God has made provision to answer prayers, okay? God wills to answer prayers. I told you something in the last few days, maybe it was yesterday, that's a little bit shocking. God personally receives glory when you have answers to your prayers. God gets glory when he answers your prayers. God is waiting for you to pray correctly so that his will can be done and so that he can receive glory on planet Earth from believers so that we will be a signpost to the non-believers that God's alive. He, he answers prayer. He wants to help you and save you and deliver you and heal you and restore your marriage and all these wonderful things that are promised in the Word of God, all right? So just as there are laws that govern uh, mathematics and science and aviation and electricity and all that stuff. I think I told you that before. There are laws and principles that govern prayer. Our job is to believe uh, and tap into and use, utilize those laws in prayer that will cause God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, I have a friend, female friend, that used to work for Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman. OK, and she traveled all over the world with them. She was like a personal assistant, things like that. Uh, she went to Australia when uh, Tom Cruise was filming down there. She'd been on the Concord. So she had a close relationship with them. And as an uh, act of uh, appreciation, one time they gave her a hat and on the hat, they had just finished a movie together. And on the hat, it said eyes wide shut. And so she she loved that hat. And she loved me, so she gave me that hat to bless me. Now, I wish I could wear that hat, eyes wide shut, to church so that people would ask me, Pastor Glenn, what's that all about? And I said, well, I think a lot of Christians are walking around with their uh, eyes open, but their eyes are really shut. They don't see what's going on, how, the, how important the Word of God is, what's going to be happening in America in the next two years, and things like that, okay? But I can't wear the hat because some people would know that the movie that uh, Nicole and Tom Cruise made was like uh, erotic. And so, wow. 
But I want you to know, I want you to wake up in Jesus' name, find the integrity, understand the integrity of God's word, the importance of putting protection and wisdom and knowledge versus in you, because in the days ahead, in the next two years, I wish I could tell you some of these things, but I don't want to take the time. I got. I know the most important thing in the world is the Word of God. I might tell you a little bit here and there, but anyway, what I want you to know, understand, comprehend, is that God wants to answer your prayer, and God gets glory. This should give you a lot of confidence in prayer as you walk with God, all right? So there's three basic approaches for the believer to use in prayer. And number one is praise. Psalm 95, verse 2. Remember I read to you or quoted to you, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And so the number one is Psalm 95, verse 2, come before his presence with thanksgiving. And so we start thanking the Lord, start praising him. Well, I don't have nothing to praise God for, Pastor Glenn. Well, do you have air in your lungs? Do you have another day to feed your faith, to get strong in the Lord, the power of his might? Do you have your opportunity to put on the whole armor of God so that you're not moved by circumstances? Psalm 102 says, come before his presence with singing. That's important. Find some of these wonderful songs on YouTube where people are worshiping God and let the presence of God come into you. And then Psalm 100 verse 4 says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Philippians uh, 4, 6 says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So these verses tell us that thanksgiving and praise and through those through thanksgiving and praise and worship, we are ushered into the glorious presence of God. We are to let God know through praise that we're aware of what, who he is and what he's been doing for us, and that his promises are true to us, and start thanking him and live a grateful life. Live in an attitude of gratitude. I'm going to give you a diamond right now. The things in your life that you're thankful for will increase. The things that you're unthankful for and you start neglecting will exit your life completely. That's what's happened in American marriages they, they've not paid attention, husband and wife have failed to pay attention to one another, even in the Christian realm. The Christian divorce rate is just as bad as the world, okay? And so you've got you've to honor your spouse. You've got to love them. You've got to be happy you have a car. You have to be happy you have a roof over your head. Praise God. Through praise and thanksgiving, we magnify God. And we demonstrate an attitude of gratitude. And that's so, so, so important. We also magnify what God has done in times past and through praise. Thank you, Lord, that I was on my deathbed, but you raised me up. Thank you, Lord, that I had a 357 Magnum pointed at me from four feet away with a hammer back, and somehow you got me out of that. I've got a lot of stuff to be thankful for, but I don't remember that stuff every day. So when I'm talking to you, I'm talking to me too. We thank him for what he's done for others and what he will do for us as we rehearse the deeds of God. Faith comes alive in our heart and makes us ready to receive from him. After we have sufficiently found the verses that promise you and me what we need, and then sufficiently praise him that those verses are true, then we make our request known to God, Philippians 4, 6. Praise God. Amen. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, with, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, we've left out the thanksgiving so many times, let our request be made known unto God. Praise God. Okay, I, I hope I have time to tell you how Jehoshaphat prayed. Um, in Second Chronicles 20, verse 1 through 12, I love the story. I'm going to read it to you, though. I can quote it and paraphrase it, but I think if I read it, maybe it'll be better. It came to pass after this. You have to read what happened before. That the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and, the, and besides them the Amorites came to Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some 
and told Jehoshaphat, there comes a great multitude against you from beyond the sea on this side of Syria. And behold, they are in... It was a hard name, so I had to fake it. And Jehoshaphat feared or, or, and set himself to seek the Lord. Yeah, that's a good thing to do when you, you're outnumbered. Uh, and proclaimed a fast throughout all Ju- Judea or Judah. And, and uh, Judah gathered themselves together and asked help of the Lord, even out of all the cities of Judah. And they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation before the Lord in, Jeru- in Jerusalem, in the house of the Lord, before the new court, and said, O God, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not the God in heaven? That ru- and don't you rule over all kingdoms, even of the heathen? And in your hand, there's power and might, and, and nothing can withstand you. Are you not our God, who drove out the inhabitants of the land before us, the people of Israel? What was he doing? He was putting God in remembrance and magnifying God for what he did in the past. That's what I'm telling you. First praise, then increase. And now uh, I'm going to jump ahead. I don't know what verse it is. And now behold the children of Ammon and uh, Moab and Mount Seir, uh, whom you would not let us invade. They came out of the land of Egypt when we came out of the land of Egypt, but you turned us away. Behold, is this our reward? Uh, They're they're coming. I got to paraphrase now. They are coming now to kill us and take from us every good thing you've given us and blessed us. Jehoshaphat was a good king. And the Lord was with him because he didn't seek unto Baal, false gods. Jehoshaphat took away all the high places, uh, Satan's altars. He tore down all the groves, the Bible says, the totem poles. And he sent, listen, why did Jehoshaphat do that he got so prosperous that three countries wanted to come and take away his stuff? He sent Bible teachers throughout Judah to teach the word of God, his actions ca- caused the people of God to be extremely blessed. Read uh, chapter 17. Suddenly, the de- devil's crowd got jealous and came to steal it. And what did Jehoshaphat do? Notice that Jehoshaphat's respond to this invasion uh, was prayer. Remember, we're looking for ingredients of prayer that get results. I'm out of time. Saints... I'm believing that there's a number of you that are going to stand with me in prayer and faith and financial support. I'm asking for $22, a dollar a day. There's 27 days or there's 22 days, uh, weekdays during the month. Invest a dollar a day to hear the mighty word of God. Let me coach you with the word of God. Listen, I'm out of time. Make a great day. Thank you, Pastor Glenn. Pastor Glenn's daily podcast is available on Spotify, his Pillars of Faith Christian app, and YouTube. I encourage you to support Pastor Glenn by listening to his podcast daily and watching his Bible teachings on YouTube. By sharing his content and increasing his viewership, we can get the gospel of Jesus Christ to more people across the globe. Let's encourage our friends and family to get inspired by God's Word with Pastor Glenn's teachings.